Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at graphing and transforming functions. We're going to look at the parameters a and b and p and k. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at transformations, let's go ahead and make sure that we have a clear understanding of what types of transformations we have. Uh, we have non-rigid transformations, of course, which actually change the shape of the function. Or we have things that are called rigid transformations, which basically just keep the function the way that it is, and it's going to either shift it left, right, up, or down. Okay? So here's what we have when we're talking about the non-rigid transformations. We can either stretch or shrink the parent function vertically or horizontally, or we can reflect the parent function about the y-axis or about the x-axis. Okay, and then we can have a rigid transformation where you're just going to be shifting the whole parent function, either up or down, or left or right. And there you go, those are all the ones that we're going to take a look at. And we need to go ahead then and answer this key question now that we have all of the different transformations up here. Key question, does the parameter affect the x or the y variable? Because remember what we said before was that when you have the, parameter, uh, the parent function, in order to create the child function, you need to affect the x and y variables with parameters. So it's going to be key because that's going to clue you in as to exactly what's happening. So let's just go ahead and answer that question right now. If you actually stretch or shrink parent function vertically. So if you actually stretch it or shrink it this way, what are you actually affecting? Well, you're affecting the y values. What if you do it horizontally? Then if that's the case, then you're affecting the x values. Okay, if you reflect px about the y-axis, think about where the y-axis is, you reflect it about that way, you're actually affecting the x values. And if you reflect about the x-axis, then really what you're doing is you're affecting the y values. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the shifts here. What if you go ahead and shift P of X up or down? What are you actually affecting? You're affecting the y variables. And what if you go ahead and shift it left and right? Then again, what you're doing is you're affecting the X variable. So, that's going to be key because you want to make sure to recognize which variable is actually being affected because then it's going to clue you in as to how, how the parameter is affecting the parent function as a whole. So let's go ahead then and be very general about this. Let's say for any parent function, let's just say that this is y sub 1, is going to be the parent function p of x. Now if y sub 2 is actually going to be the p of x plus b, the question is, is, what are we affecting? What is B actually affecting? Well, if we go ahead and take a look at P of X, P of X is actually these Y values that you had with your original parent function. After that, you're just adding B to it. So in other words, all you're doing is you're affecting the Y values of this P of X. If that's the case, then what you're doing then is you're really just shifting up or down. Okay, so that's the variable B. I'm oh, sorry, not the variable, but the parameter B. Okay? Now, if we go ahead and take a look at y sub 2 here, where it says P of X minus A, then notice that what we had, this is what our first function looked like. We're actually affecting the X value this time, because we're subtracting A. And we know from before, from some of the other experiences that we've had, is that this is then going to be a left or right shift. So what that means then is that the left or right shift, which is affecting the x value, is going to be incorporated with this parameter a here. Okay, and notice again that it is affecting the x value. So if we go to this one here, let's say y sub 2 is going to be equal to p times it by the parent function. Remember the parent function has all of these y values. So what's happening then is we're just basically multiplying all of those y values by the, by the scalar factor of p. So what that means then is we're stretching or shrinking vertically with this particular parameter, little p. So if we shrink or stretch vertically, then we're dealing with the parameter, little p. 
Okay, in the same respect, if we go ahead and take a look at that, we're taking a look at a shift or a shrink based upon the value of k, and that value of k is affecting the x variable. Since it's affecting the x variable, it's going to be a stretch or shrink horizontally, and so we know that the parameter to actually stretch or shrink horizontally will be the value k. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take a very quick example here. If we know that our parent function is f of x is equal to x squared, okay, notice that we're talking about the most simple form of our function, then if you have y is equal to 2 f of x over 2 minus 3 plus 4, hopefully everybody will be able to look at that and be able to have an idea of what is actually happening transformation by transformation. So let's take a look at what happens. Now, of course, we have to follow the order of operations. So the first thing that we have then is we have to have this x divided by 2. So if we talk about this x divided by 2, that's the same thing as 1 half times by x. So it's actually looking something like this. So we know that that scalar factor of 1 half is shrinking the parent function horizontally by a factor of 1 half, by a factor of 2. Okay, shrinking by a factor of 2. Okay, after that, once we go ahead and shrink that by a factor of 2, or by a scalar factor of 1 half, then we need to go ahead and subtract 3. So now if we go ahead and take a look at that, we're looking at this form here. So that means then that we're actually moving it to the right three units. Okay? And so notice that we're taking care of those two right there. So we're dealing with the horizontal shrink as well as the shift to the right three units. Then after that, we have this here, which is 2. Now notice where the 2 is. The 2 is here. So what that represents is that it's taking all of those y values that you're now generating from these horizontal uh, shifts as well as shrink and shrinks. And then you're taking those y values and then you're multiplying it by 2, which is here. So that means then that you're actually stretching vertically by a factor of 2. And then, after that, we need to go ahead and take a look at this plus 4. Once you got all of that information, you take it plus 4. That's going to be here. That's the value of b. That value of b is taking all of your y values, and you're shifting it up 4. So you're shifting it up 4 because that's what's that how that is how the 4 is affecting those particular y values given by this part of the function there. Okay. So what you need to be able to do, although I know we've worked a lot with being able to find functions in particular, like say for example substitute this into x squared, then multiply it by 2, then plus 4, we can do that, but you should need to also be able to work with this type of notation and be able to see what kind of transformations are happening and in what order. Okay, so there you go. Again, remember that the key question is, how does the, what, does the parameter affect the x or the y variable? And if you can remember that, then you have an idea of whether it's a stretch, a shrink, a shift, or later on we'll take a look at reflections as well. Okay, so we'll take a look at some of those examples in class and hopefully everybody will be able to see what is happening here in terms of creating child functions from your parent functions using parameters to do transformations. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Bye.